Hey everyone, welcome to my live demo today. I am gonna be painting a little bee eater. Um, so I'm back in my studio, it sounds a little echoey, sorry about that. Um, we haven't moved everything back in yet, but we've gotten the walls painted so far. Um, they used to be this deep green, um, it was kind of a dark cave in here, but we're in the process of transforming the studio. I've actually been um, recording it along the way and I'm gonna be putting that on my YouTube channel um, so you can see the transformation from beginning to end. So um, anyway, if I didn't already introduce myself, I am Chris Branley with Chris Branley Art. I work in the alla prima method, meaning working wet into wet, impressionistically. So if you are joining me, I would love for you to tell me that you're here, give me a thumbs up, tell me where you're from. And um, I just wanted to mention that next week we are gonna be taking a break because it is my husband and I's 25th anniversary. So we're gonna be celebrating that, but then we'll be back on again in two weeks. So welcome those of you that are joining in. I'm going to go ahead and get right to it because I have a dental appointment this afternoon, which I absolutely hate going to the dentist. How many of you like going to the dentist? <laughs> I mean, it is like pulling teeth getting me to go to the dentist. No pun intended. <laughs> but um, anyway, it's one of my biggest fears, so this is going to be a really great distraction until it's time for me to go. But um, without further ado... We will get this going. So I've already kind of started my sketch. I'm gonna get my gloves on. It's always important to wear gloves. You really don't want those cadmiums um, and terpenoids to be seeping into your skin. So it's always good to protect your hands. I just, I've been using these nitrile. Um, this particular brand, I don't particularly care for. They make my hands sweat a lot more than the other ones and I don't remember the other brand, but I will look it up. And if I remember, I'll put it in the comments later. So guys, even if you are joining in later, um, and you're not able to catch the live video, go ahead and ask questions anyway. Even if you're getting it on my YouTube channel later or the Facebook page later, I will still come back and answer those questions. So if you're watching and you're not watching live, um, then don't be shy. Go ahead and ask any questions that you have and I am happy to come back and answer those. So how's everybody doing today? We went from having about five weeks of rain to now very, very humid, hot weather. And they're even telling us now we have to start conserving our energy because they may do a rolling blackout. And we all know what happened <laughs> back in the winter time when we had that and ended up losing electricity for several days. So um, not a fan, but anyway, I am just, um, I've got a grid in and that kind of helps me to get the placement. What I'm doing now is just placing an underpainting and it's gonna support the top painting later. So I'm, I'm coming in with colors that are a little bit darker than what I'm gonna end up with. And I am noticing right now, I don't have one of my favorite colors on my palette. I'm very low. Are y'all hearing an echo? So if you didn't, hear, if you weren't with me from the very beginning when I was introducing, um, we are in the middle of transforming my studio, and so there's not a lot of furniture in here yet, and I haven't hung all the paintings on the wall, so there's quite a bit of an echo, which I didn't realize until just now. So uh, I apologize for that, but I'm going to come in here and kind of darken some of this. This is underneath and it's not catching as much light. Yes, Jessica, hi, how are you today? Um, he is a cutie, I think. So this actually 
was a photograph that was taken by a friend of mine, Bruce Rosenstiel. I encourage you to go check out his page. He is an amazing photographer. And his website is, I believe it's Small World Photos. So check out his amazing photos that he has from all over the world. Before COVID, he was a, quite the traveler and we'd get all kinds of wonderful pictures. And so he graciously allows me to paint some of his photos every now and then. Let's see, I am just checking on my other device here. I wanna make sure I can see all the comments coming in. There we go. Okay, so Abigail is saying no echo. That's good because I'm hearing it loud and clear on my end. <laughs> so I'm glad you're not. Thank you for letting me know, Abigail. And if you're just joining in again, introduce yourself. Tell me where you're from. What, what's been going on? Are you an artist or just an art lover? Love the interaction. So I'm just kind of popping in some fun undertones that I'm gonna to allow to peek through a little bit later on. So we're on an hour earlier than normal today. So those of you, if you're missing and catching it later, you know, I will save it, so no worries. But um, like I said earlier, I have a dental appointment which I'm not looking forward to. I don't know, I'm such a big baby when it comes to that. Move this light up a little higher. And this little guy has quite a red eye. Hey, Laura, good to see you. Art lover, can't wait for my painting. I can't wait to send it. I am planning on mailing it tomorrow. So um, you should be getting it very soon. I'm gonna pop in some red in there to begin with. We'll put all the black, the pupil and stuff in later. We'll punch those values in really deep. All right, what are we gonna do with that background? I don't really wanna put green back there. Um, I think I'll stick with kind of a maybe cool tone, um, but maybe go more neutral. Not really sure. Um, let me just put some magenta back there and then we can decide later. Magenta is always a great undertone. So when in doubt, I like to just throw that up and then decide later. Hey, Amy, watching from Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Awesome. Um, so in my online course, the paid course, I'm really thorough in telling you all the color mixtures and um, exactly what I'm picking up. I've got two cameras, on, one on my palette, one on the painting, and I'm very specific. So in these free demos, I'm just kind of painting and you guys can feel free to ask questions. I'm happy to tell you a color two or two, but I'm not gonna, um, go through every color at this point. But you can catch that if you go on my website, chrisbranley.com. The first, first month is still free. And this month we are painting lavender from France. So if you're interested and you wanna check that out, chrisbranley.com. Uh-oh, we're losing our tightness here. Let me fix that because I don't want that falling back. So in the process of painting the studio, I also painted my easel white, which was kind of a pain, but I think it looks so much better. 
So even though I know it's gonna get paint on it again, it just, it kind of blends into the wall better. I just, I'm real happy with it. So I always put tape on the top and bottom anyway, just because whenever I take this one out, um, even with the old studio, I mean with the old easel before going back and painting it white, it would have all this wet paint on it and then that would kind of get drug up into the next painting. And so what I always do is just put a piece of tape there so if paint gets on there, I just take it off and put a fresh piece on for the next painting. So I can tell my painting is still a little bit loose in the easel, but I'm just gonna have to be careful here. Going a little darker down on the bottom just for fun. For some reason on this little device over here, my comments disappear really fast. So I'm having to kind of look back behind me on the phone while I'm recording, which is not easy, but I do wanna be able to respond to your comments. So I'll do the best I can. And I added a little floopy here I know that's not the technical term, but um, you guys know what I mean. Just to kind of carry the eye back up into the painting. So um, I was noticing this line through here, it's diagonal and can cause anxiety sometimes when you have diagonals in your picture and it's just taking the eye right off the edge. And so I'm wanting to do something to kind of bring the eye back up into the painting. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so got the majority of the canvas covered. So we're gonna go back in and punch in some darker values now. And I rarely use a tiny brush whenever I'm painting impressionistically. And unless I'm doing something really small and detailed like the eye, and then I also will use a mall stick or a straight edge or something just so I can rest my hand. So in this case, I'm just using a level. And that way I can get in really close. Mix up a nice dark color here. So I'm not using black. I always mix up my own blacks just because I feel like um, black straight from the tube is a little bit harsh. So just coming in and kind of darkening some of this area here. And the level is helping me steady my hand a bit. And I can always come back and make little adjustments as I need to. So I'm not real worried about getting too detailed at this point. Just looking for those darker values. All right, I think we can stop using the level at this point and go back to the bigger brush. So I do use um, mainly Rembrandt oils. I love the viscosity, the brilliance. Um, I love their translucent colors, which is what I'm using right now. Um, and I like to put the transparent colors in and then get, go back over and build up opaque colors on top. So right now I'm looking to see, there's a couple of areas that I wanted to get a little bit more really light highlight in and I kind of took that magenta in too far. So I'm just cleaning the brush and drying it off and then kind of erasing out where I want those really bright, vivid backlighting. If I can start off early enough with my values, 
That's gonna help me in the long run. I'm gonna take this yellow up a little higher. All right, so I am now ready for my opaque colors. So I'm just going to kind of clean out my palette a little bit, I'm using a palette knife just to scrape. And I've got a glass palette, so it makes it really easy to scrape off all of that oily residue. Now I've got a nice clean mixing area to work with. That's one of the things that I really stress in my classes is to make sure you're keeping everything clean and that's how you can stay really vibrant in your painting. So if you have a dirty brush and you keep going back in with that dirty brush, um, you're gonna take away the vibrancy. If your terpenoid is dirty, um, that takes away from it. So I'm always wiping my brush out after every few strokes to make sure it's clean. Keeping the palette clean, that helps to keep everything else clean. Alrighty. I am gonna start in with the yellowy tones of the bird here. And I'm just gonna blend this in a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna start where this really vibrant yellow is. So I'm building up some nice thick paints, really vibrant colors. And we're just going to start laying in some brush strokes. And I'm not going to worry too much about getting everything perfect right now. I can always come back. But it's best to kind of work around the canvas and not stay in one place too long. And it's important to think about your brush strokes. So even though impressionistic looks very um, loose and choppy, it's still a methodical process. So you're still wanting to kind of think about your stroke and then allow it to be applied spontaneously, but methodically. And it's important to take time to mix your colors well I mix those on my palette. Coming in with a little bit darker so I can come back and lighten some of that later if needed. And I look to see um, the temperatures and how the temperatures tend to shift. So sometimes Like down in here, we're getting a cooler color. It's a little bit darker, and so I've added kind of a green tone into my orange. And I'm just skipping around, letting some of that color still show through from the background. And I like to come in and kind of enhance my colors a little bit just to keep it fresh and fun. Put a little pink in there. So it's okay to not do every single thing that you see in your photograph. Your photo is just a reference. You're the artist, you get to do what you want. All right, I'm gonna come up around the eye here and get in that beautiful turquoise. So we've got some pretty turquoise and green tones, my favorite, favorite colors. As a matter of fact, so one of the pieces of furniture I'm waiting on to come in for the studio is a little console and it's kind of an aqua blue and it should arrive tomorrow, so I'm really excited about getting that piece in. I had a big cabinet in before and was able to sell that, and it served its purpose for a while, but um, ultimately 
it really didn't have shelving in it, so it's just a big open cavity and really hard to store stuff. It just, you know, it just kind of became a mess. Getting some of those pretty greens in. Right back in here. I think we're gonna come over to the tail and get a nice deep yellowy orange, kind of lay that in as some of the backlighting. And I've got a um, in-person class coming up here in Texas, in North Richland Hills next month. And somebody was asking me um, about the brush, if they should get the long handle or the short handle brush. And so um, I do have both. And when I travel, I tend to use the short handle brush just because it takes up less space and I can kind of condense those down a little bit. But um, if you can get in the habit of using longer handled brushes, that'll cause you to put your hand a little bit further back or help remind you to put your hand further back because that'll help you stay loose. When you're really up close on your paintbrush like this, holding it like a pencil, it's gonna stay really tight. So if you can get in the habit of holding it further back and like I'm not gripping it really tight, I'm holding it fairly loose, that is actually gonna help keep it a little bit more impressionistic. Tip of the day. Let's see, I'm missing a comment. Jean from British Columbia, Canada. So glad to watch you recreate this lovely bird. So glad you are here, Jean. As I was saying earlier, my friend, and Jean is in my, one of my classes, my online course. So she's probably heard me say this before because I have used some of Bruce's other's photo, other photos. But um, he is an awesome photographer and allows me to use some of his pictures. He goes all over the world. So as I work my way down, I'm thinking about the light coming in kind of from the back and the top. And so we are getting darker in his color tones. All those little fuzzy things I save till later so that we can blend those into the background. And I'm gonna pop in a slight pinkish white. Keeping it fairly light and then we'll pop in a little bit of a yellowy color right here in this highlight here. So I've got this, um, it's Richardson Oils, it's a Shiva series. Brilliant Yellow Light is a really great color to substitute for white on occasion because it's much warmer. So Titanium White is actually kind of a dull, cooler color. And this helps to kind of make it a little bit more sunny. And if you want to even go sunnier, you can add a little bit of yellow in there. It's 
I'm gonna pop in this highlight here. And again, we'll come back and do some of those fuzzies later. I do all that last. And as it moves up, it starts to get more pink. So I'm just kind of laying in my colors like a puzzle here and there. And then I come back in the end and just kind of start tying everything together and, and work on refining. So I'll come back and just blend a few edges. You don't want to over blend. You want to keep it fresh and impressionistic if you're working in that particular style. So I just kind of go back and forth throughout the painting. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and figure out a color for the background. Because anytime you've got a really big space like that, it kind of helps to go ahead and get that part finished. Um, and kind of and go with a little bigger brush here. Start just tying everything together. So I think we're gonna keep it fairly neutral. and kind of cool because I want those, those orangey highlights to really stand out. So I'm just kind of thinking this through. We may change things up a little bit, but start with this. So this is another awesome color called Ice Blue by the same company, Richardson Shiva, which I have a hard time saying for some reason. Richardson Shiva, Richardson, Richardson. I don't know why I always get tongue tied with that. And as I work, I'm gonna pop in some other colors. So that way where those areas where I want those highlights to stand out, we'll have some darker values in the background. Just letting that kind of blend in with those purples in the background. Recarving the shape of the tail. Not covering every bit of that background. So I want some of that magenta color to still be visible. That's what creates that vibrancy, having some of those translucent colors still peeking through. Changing up my color, going a little bit darker, a little bit cooler. Going back in with that light ice blue, which is kind of a gray color. 
And I may end up darkening this a little bit, we'll see. I'm just gonna kind of pull these together a little bit so it's not just such a sharp transition. All right, so I just do a little bit, kind of let that sit for a bit while I work on some other areas. I can always come back. All right, let's see here. I think I'm gonna detail that eye just a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to my little teeny brush. So this one is like a 1 8 and it's actually an angular brush, so I can get in there with that point. It's kind of frayed, so um, it's an old brush. I need to get a couple of new brushes, but we'll see what happens with this. Okay, so what I need to do to define that, I think is come in with a little bit lighter value underneath the eye. So I'm gonna do kind of a bluish so it'll be a little bit lighter, kind of define down underneath. I'm coming back in with my mall stick. Okay, I'm moving my hand up just a little bit so I have a little bit more control. Just want to make sure I'm not staying here. And that kind of pulls into this darker value a little bit. And then I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put a highlight on the top of the beak while I've got this brush. And it's not something that needs to go across the whole beak you kind of want to have breaks in your lines so that the eye tends to dance around a little bit more and not be directed off the canvas or where you don't want it directed. So I'm just looking at little areas where while I've got this mall stick out and my little brush Looking for places where I can pop in a few little highlights. I think I need to go a little lighter there. And maybe a little warmer. And I like that color and I'm gonna bounce it off the beak over here. It's fun to kind of take some of those colors and kind of pop them in here and there. Now I'm coming back in with my dark for the pupil Need to kind of reestablish that because I lost it a little bit. This line got a little too thick in here. And I'm having to come back and make sure I clean my brush. Anytime I'm touching that lighter opaque color, I don't want that to affect what I've got on my brush. I always have to stop and go back and make sure I'm taking the time to clean that out. 
And I do want to pop in that bit of red there that's in the eye. He's got quite a red eye. Okay, so now I'm cleaning all the paint out of that brush. And I'm gonna come in with just a clean brush and kind of transition these colors together, see if it works. Just to soften that ever so slightly. All right, now what we kind of need to do, let's see what, how much time we have here. Got 20 minutes, so we've got plenty of time. I'm gonna come back in and start softening some of the feathers into the background. So I'm going back in with my bigger brush again. Making sure it's clean. And I'm gonna pop some of those highlights those yellows and come in a little brighter. And some of those rough edges in here, that's all gonna get fixed when we start carving in the background and kind of meshing those edges together. Pulling those feathery fluff bits out. Let's see, I wanna add a little pink. Even though you can't really see it in here, I think it'll just make it a little more interesting. Those pinks and oranges always work really well with each other, so I like to use those together. All right, so I'm coming in with my dry brush and I'm just gonna start pulling some of these feathers into the background, softening that up a bit. And in order to do that, I always have to make sure my paint is thick enough on the canvas. And I'm gonna pull some of that background and start carving this shape out a little better. Those colors kind of blend into each other. Yep, he's got kind of a hump back. We need to fix that. Just a matter of kind of going back and forth. Very much an ebb and flow. And I'm just looking kind of at the undertones now the belly. I'm going to add some more color in there. So sometimes you kind of have to, I've got an idea of what I want this to look like, but things look so different on the palette. 
um, compared to pulling them up onto the painting. So sometimes you just have to try some things out, see if it works. And if not, go back and remix. And I'm okay with that, but I do want it to go a little warmer. Maybe a little more neutral. So again, as we're working down, it becomes a little bit more kind of green and temperature, cool and temperature. So I'm adding some green tones to that to kind of neutralize, get more of a gray. And again, I'm not taking it all the way to the edge because I'm wanting to kind of pull that out with a dry brush. Mixing up some tail colors. Got a little pink in there. But I'm not wanting it to be a real vibrant pink at this point. So I'm pulling in that ice blue, that's toning it down. Adding in a little more blue, cooling it down. And you do always get to a point where it's looking messy and if you get to that point, which I would be surprised if you didn't, then just keep pushing forward because it's just part of the process. You've got to get messy and dirty. It's kind of like what I've discovered with transforming the studio. You gotta take everything out and make the house totally messy and come back and transform it into something beautiful. So it always goes through an awkward stage and that's important at that point to not give up because pushing through is what really starts to pull it together. So now I'm just taking these edges and kind of softening those, making them look more feathery. I'm also wanting to redefine the bottom of his beak a little bit. needed to be a little wider and a little darker. And then we're needing some, a little bit of backlighting. Laura says, watching you paint makes me relax. Well, good. I'm so glad. We all need to have some calm in our lives. I like watching other people paint as well. Just looking to mix up kind of a creamy yellow. Pop in a little pink. I 
Okay, we haven't done anything with this little branch that he's sitting on. So I'm just gonna mix up kind of a neutral color. I'm not gonna go too brown, keeping it cooler. And I think I'm gonna start a little darker and then we'll build the highlights. Just kind of a neutral grayish tone. And I don't wanna to draw too much attention to this because we want our attention to be on the bird. And I'm just kind of putting in different types of strokes, skipping around, getting a little darker as we move down. So it's actually gonna be a little darker underneath so that's gonna help give us a little depth here. And especially where the bird is <clears throat> blocking the light here, it's gonna be darker. Wanting to pop in some really nice sunny yellow tones. Putting in those nice highlights really helps it to start to come alive. And I'm gonna start putting in some of these little fluffy feathers. So again, I just get my, dry, my brush really dry and clean. And come in and kind of pull those into the other color. And that has to be pretty thick, that paint on there. So I'm gonna come back in and reapply some of that nice and thick. Get a nice dry clean brush and then we'll just pull it very lightly. Create that soft feather feeling. And just wanting this turquoise above his eye, I want to put in a pop of a nice light highlight. Lighter than what we've got there. Really pull the attention towards his eye. Might even put a tiny bit of yellow. Warm that temperature up a little bit. I think it'll make it stand out a little bit better. It's right up in here. And we're just gonna come back and soften through there a little bit. Coming back again and kind of thickening up some of those paint colors so I can pull that feather, that nice fluffy feather up into the other colors. Right, 
in through here, nice and thick. Let's see, we've got a nice bright orangey color there. So we're gonna pop that in, kind of bump that up a little bit. And I'm gonna put a little bits of blue feathery highlights in here. So I'm just looking to see like areas that need to be brightened. Sometimes you have to darken in order for them to look brighter. And I know we've got a nice dark line through there. Looking for other places to pop in some really pretty highlights. Kind of going back and forth and changing up my temperatures a little bit between yellows and pinks. And we've got about five minutes, so let's get some highlights on his little branch. So instead of using white, I always like to add little tints of color to the white, just to keep it from being too cold looking. So I've just got a little purple And I took it down a little far, but that's okay. I'm not gonna worry about it. And then just popping that temperature back and forth, making it warmer and cooler, is gonna create a really beautiful vibrancy. So come in with the warmer highlight. And all these little edges and things, I'll come back and start kind of carving into that, smoothing things, meshing things together, thinking about um, what is most important in the picture and then going back and softening other areas. And we need to get a little highlight on his eye. So I think that'll probably be my last little thing that I do. Actually, as soon as I, let's do this first. Just wanna pull this down. 
Um, let me get some nice light color here. Right in through here. And we're just gonna pull that into the background. Little feathers. All right, coming in, back in with the highlight. We're not gonna go pure white. I'm gonna give it kind of a little bit of a teal tint. And just popping that in, if I get it in the right place, it'll make him look more alive. All right, guys, thank you so much. Let me flip this around. Thanks for joining in today. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Um, again, those of you that um, have missed it, you can go to my YouTube channel. It will be saved there. Also save it on my Facebook page. Hope you guys have a wonderful week. Think about me as I go to the dentist today <laughs> so I can keep calm. But um, anyways, appreciate you guys so much. And uh, again, next week I will be away. So we'll be back in two weeks. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks a lot.